Welcome back to the Scottabyte channel and this is Scott. So today, Ancus version 6.4 was released about 20 hours ago. And I want to go over what some of the basic updates were. So to begin with, we have um, the version number, obviously, you can go upgrade it. And basically, the way you do that is we can do a pseudo apt update and a pseudo apt upgrade. Or in my case, I'm going to do a pseudo apt uh, or a pseudo NALA update. Use the NALA front end to APT and do the update. And it should find that there are three updates that are available for the new Incus. And then I do a pseudo NALA upgrade and it should find the three updates. And those are the Incus and Incus base and Incus client. We go ahead and say yes to do the upgrade. And it's just that easy to upgrade from a previous version of Incus all the way to Incus version 6.4. Once the upgrade has completed, we can see that we're at Incus 6.4 by doing an Incus space version, and it should call out version 6.4 for both the client and the server. And now let's head on back up to the release notes. So one of the first things that we have here is some additions for clustering, and they involve mostly setting new cluster commands and I think probably the most significant here is setting a cluster baseline for your CPU type. And clusters so far have had to be completely homogenous. And eventually, I guess they're moving to the point where you will be able to mix and match CPU types in a cluster. The next new feature they have is using a subpath of a volume as a disk. And the basic idea is you launch two particular uh, containers and then you go ahead and create a volume and you can go ahead and attach a subfolder of that volume off to a container or to multiple containers. And I went over this a little bit in my previous OCI video. Next up, we have uh, per storage pool projects limits. Now I haven't really covered projects on the channel before, but the idea is that you might have groups of programmers in some kind of a company who are working separately from another group, and you'll be able to set up resources for those particular users. And so they have a, pro a uh, command called Incas Project Info, and you can give the name of the project. And right now, at first, it starts out that all the resource usages are set to zero. And likewise, you can also do an Incas storage list. And in this example, we have uh, two particular storage pools, the default storage pool and a storage pool called Foo. And so uh, with this capability, you can add a uh, limit to disk space used and um, instances and memory and all sorts of other things. And that is really the second new option here. So next up after project limits, they also have isolated OVN networks. So OVN networks are something else I haven't really addressed. They're a little bit like VLANs, except with a little bit more flexibility. And up until now, you weren't allowed to have an isolated VLAN in an Incas network container connection. And now they support that. I'm not sure what the exact use case is, but uh, they now support that as of version 6.4. So next up, realize that both LexD and Incas ride on top of Linux containers, otherwise known as LexC. And by default, Incas has always shared its file system amongst all the containers on a LexD server or an Incas server because of the underlying LexC file system. And now with this particular upgrade, you're allowed to create multiple LexC file systems. 
And the reason behind doing that is if you had a um, resource uh, usage on a particular container that tends to lock things up or cause problems, that way you could maybe isolate a file system for a particular container or group of containers in order to have a little bit better performance or higher availability, I suppose. Personally, one of the most exciting updates I find in version 6.4 is support for what they call an environment variable for our OCI Docker containers. And the idea behind that is you might create an environment file, for example, here, mysql.env, where you put four environment variables, five, whatever you have, into a file. And then when you launch the container, instead of doing the uh, dash C environment dot, uh, like I had done in my examples of my two OCI container videos, the last two videos, instead of doing that, essentially what you can have is you can create a container where you can say, launch this container, and it might be running MySQL in this example, and then you can say dash dash environment dash file equals that file where all of those environment variables are. And then once you do that, just to demonstrate, if you do a um, incus config show MySQL, you can see in the config file that it says um, all of the environment variables you have set. Of course, there's several set by default, but then you have additional ones that were set by that file uh, that went into uh, the configuration when you created the container. If you haven't watched my last video entitled Docker in Incus with Incus Volumes, that also shows a very creative way to go out and create a volume so that you don't have to have your persistent data being stored in folders on your Incus server. Instead, it uses Incus volumes. And in those, in that particular video, and also the video before, I demonstrated the use of environment variables that you can pass into OCI Docker containers. So I see in the future a whole lot more additions that will probably be coming to pass in Incus as the versions go onward. Um, especially in the Docker OCI containers because that's the newest container type. And again, if you're not familiar with the Docker OCI container support, be sure to watch my last two videos. I want to apologize for not having released my videos in a more timely manner recently. My wife has been in the hospital and so we've had a lot of challenges uh, from a health perspective. Anyway, I appreciate each and every one of you, and please pass the word on the channel, and please like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.